Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, bingo, you know where you are now. It's Think Tech Monday. My God. Another Monday. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters, and my special guest today is Tom Yamachika of the Hawaii Tax Foundation. So, so nice to see you. Come back and talk to us some more about what, what's going on in the square building, Tom. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on the show, Jay. So we're going to talk today about tax bills, 2018 Hawaii legislature. And I guess we should start out by, by identifying, you know, the, the tone and tenor, uh, which is dependent so much on the Council of Revenues. What did they say? What does it mean? How, has, how should it affect the legislature? How is it affecting the legislature? Well, uh, the Council on Revenues... Uh, gave us some good news. They, they said that uh, we're going to get more money than we anticipated. Um, but that doesn't, uh, that doesn't make up for two bad things that happened. Mm. One is, uh, when the governor submitted the supplemental budget, it was, it was already $200, $200 million in the hole from the start. You mean his budget was $200 million short? That's right. Uh, Spending $200 million. Why did that happen? How could that happen? Is that a typographical error or what? No, that's what, that's what they submitted. The administration was $200 million off. Is it, I, I, think, I think they intended that. They, they uh, submitted that kind of budget and told the legislature, go fix it. Huh, that's interesting. I mean, you know, it's, you know like, it reminds me um, of uh, Santorum's comment yesterday to the kids in school now. He says, you should learn CPR. And they said, well, what about Congress? Is Congress going to do anything about gun control? And he said, you should learn CPR because you're the first line of defense. And they said, the teachers involved said, CPR is not going to help a kid with 10 bullets in him. That's not going to do it. So what's he, what he's doing is passing off Congress's obligation onto the community and, in fact, potential victims. So here, it sounds like, you know, um, the governor is passing off the obligation to balance the budget to the legislature or whoever the, whoever yeah. is lobbying in the legislature. Yeah, yeah, we have we have a constitutional requirement here that we, that we have a, budget, a balanced budget, and uh, to me, it's just it's just unconscionable that that they give the legislature a, an unbalanced budget to start and basically tell them to fix it. Um, that that isn't usually the then, case, is it? It's, I would hope not. It sounds irresponsible. I just. My reaction, yeah. yeah. And then, after that happened, uh, the um, actuary for the, the Employer Union Trust Fund came in and said, oh, um, you guys were using 2015 numbers? Well, it's 2018, and, and we, uh, we're going to update your numbers for you. And, uh, and by the way, uh, your, the contribution that you owe this year uh, is $50 million more than you planned. So we're down $250 million. Right. And then, so even if COR, or the Council on Revenues, came back with a, you know, rules your estimate, like maybe you know, $70, $80 million, uh, that's still, um, you know, you're, you're starting from minus 250 Yeah. Well, putting it in perspective, I mean, I suppose in the federal system, $250 million is, is, is a fly spec. But not in the state system. What's the total budget? Is what twelve billion, something like that? That's 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 about right. Yeah. So this is a substantial part of it. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Anyway, so okay. It's, it's so, not chump change by any means. No, it's it's never never chump change. But in Hawaii, it's even more precious. Um, so um, you know, we and the other thing that's on the deck that we should talk about that sort of creates the landscape here is the Tax Reform Act that was passed in what late December, early January, uh, by the late Trump December, administration, yeah. um, which, um, you know, we can talk about uh, that in substance, but I guess the first thing is the conformity bill you mentioned when we spoke recently, uh, conforming the state tax code to the cha whatever changes there are in the federal tax code. Yeah, so Usually it, it's, it's just, you just conform, but is right. that the same so here? For, for, the, for the past 60 years, uh, what we've been doing is conforming to the federal code, and, and that's for, uh, for two reasons. One is, uh, so for, for you and me who have to file tax returns, uh, once, we've, once we're done with the federal one, doing the state one is you know, much easier if, uh, if the laws 
uh, regarding what you report and what you don't report or what you write off and what you don't write off uh, are, are fairly similar. And by the same token, it helps the state because uh, once the feds audit somebody and they send their report to the state, which they do, then, uh, then, then the state can have an easier time figuring out if they're going to assess the same person for uh, state tax as well because if the same rules. Is, yeah, if, if the rules are the same, then somebody's underpaid federal probably has underpaid state. Yeah. So as for the past 60 years, um, the, I guess it was the Hawaii Tax Office put in a bill for, to conform the state tax code with the federal changes in the Federal Tax Reform Act. How is that doing? Is there a suggestion it may not go the same way as it has in the past 60 years? Uh, yes. Uh, the current version of the, uh, the tax conformity bill, which of course started off with the tax department, is that we were, we're not going to conform in several key areas. So, uh, and you, know, you, you may or may not like this, but okay, for, for individuals, for example, you remember how uh, in the federal changes, they, uh, they limited what you can write off. Like you, they limited your home, home interest deduction for your mortgage. Uh, they limited uh, your state and local taxes that you pay. Uh, they, they took away all of your 2% miscellaneous itemized deductions if, you, you know, if you're so lucky to itemize deductions. Uh, but, but, they, but they gave you um, an increased standard deduction, which is a deduction that you can get without doing anything, just by, just by being alive. And, uh, uh, and, and so there, there are trade-offs, and, the, and the, you know, the feds dropped the rate as well. So, so there are trade-offs. For a while. Yeah, yeah, for, for eight years, uh, which is what they needed to, to get it past the uh, you know, Senate rule. Okay, uh, but what they are proposing on the state side is not to conform to any of that. So uh, they would allow you to write off your uh, mortgage interest, to write off your state tax uh, expenses, uh, to take your 2% itemized deductions, but for state, pack, state tax purposes only. Because they can't change. They can't what the control feds. the federal. Yeah. yeah, they can't change what the feds do. This creates a, a disparity in the way it works. The rules now would be different um, between the state and the fed. And so, for example, an, an audit on something that was involved in the Tax Reform Act, the Federal Tax Reform Act, would not be valid as an audit, as an audit point, if you will, um, for the state, the state tax, because the rules are different. Yeah, yeah it, it it would be easier to to get out from uh, you know the, an, an assessment by saying well. Geez, well, there there are all these expenses that I have, and I can I can take deductions on the state side. You didn't consider this, uh, so you have to prove up that I don't have these deductions before you can assess me. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a huge statement here, and I don't I don't think it's limited to Hawaii. I have the sense I, you may know more uh, that this this kind of pushback on the federal government on the Tax Reform Act, it's not just Hawaii. It's other people. It's the it's the whole notion of California's action on sanctuary cities. We're not, we don't like your immigration laws and regulations, your practices, the way you push people around. We're not going to enforce those things. And then a lawsuit by the Department of Justice, what an ugly day, actually. Um, so the same thing here. I think people in the legislature uh, on this issue and probably a lot of others, including immigration, um, they don't like what the federal government's doing, and they're going to do their own thing. And they're questioning whether the Tax Reform Act is good fiscal policy, no? Yeah. Now, but, but by the same token, what they are doing is they're picking up a lot of the business changes, right? So on the business side, um, they uh, are eliminating write-offs for uh, meals and entertainment, for example. Um, well, well, the entertainment, yes, but uh, the meals they're going to leave at 50%. Uh, they're, uh, they are not picking up the rate reduction, right, because the corporate tax uh, for on the federal side was 35 percent. They dropped it down to 21 percent. On the on the, uh, the the state bill doesn't propose to change the corporate tax rate at all. I'm so, proud of them. You're proud of who? <laughs> I'm proud of the state legislature for considering rejecting these changes because I you know I, you, you can tell us how you feel about them, but I think the Tax Reform Act when it was just adopted in Congress is really bad business. Um, and it's, a, it's another dump on the middle class, and 
it's very tricky and it, it favors the big global multinational corporations uh, and saves them a huge amount of money and it doesn't really save us that much money. But tell me how you feel. We can agree or disagree. Yeah, well, um, there are several things to hate, uh, irrespective of which side of the fence you're on. Um, you, know, my, you know, my personal feeling is that that they should they, they should conform more, um, especially when it comes to uh, tax relief for the middle class. Um, what they what they I, I'm I'm not opposed to them expanding the base so much if they reduce rates, but uh, I, I think it is kind of uh, you know kind of pilau if they pick up the you know. Uh, the base broadening without reducing. Yeah, that, you're right. Then they're making more money. <clears throat> well, I suppose, yeah, we should reserve on that by saying it's the legislature trying to squeeze the public for a little more money, isn't it? That's uh, that's what it looks like so far. Now, um, keep in mind the legislature is only halfway over, and there's there's, there's still a lot of uh, time to go. Um, anything can happen. Well, <clears throat> you're down there. I know you go there. <laughs> I go there. <laughs> And you check out all these tax bills, and thank God Tom goes down there. So, <clears throat> what's your sense of it? I and mean, who is standing shoulder to shoulder with you and taking similar positions about protecting the taxpayer, trying to keep a lid on taxes and spending? Um, who's with you? Are you are you a force? This community of people who watch over the legislative tax moves? Uh, no, I'm I'm kind of a lone wolf out there mm. <laughs> most of the time. Mm. We should appreciate you for yeah, that. Howling in the wind. <laughs> we should appreciate you for that. Yeah. Okay, well, is it, you know, on, on balance, um, you know, if you say to the money committees in the legislature, no problemo, um, you know, we've got a good report from the Council on Revenues, even if it's tempered by that $250 million or $280 million shortfall, um, they're going to feel a little, they'll feel a little more free in spending, aren't they? Do you see that? Do you see that they feel a little more free in spending? No, not not at all. I mean, they uh, they have a big budget hole and they have to fill it. Mm. Created by the two hundred and fifty. Created by the two hundred and fifty. Yeah. Well, okay. So, uh, what other bills are are pending by which they're trying to fill it? And I really would like to hear your thoughts about gems, the the green energy, whatever it is, bill. Um. Yeah. Now, in in let's let's kind of start with the. You know the theme that you proposed um, about what are they trying to do to to to, to fill it. You know there are several uh, bills to raise the conveyance tax. So when you buy or sell property, uh, the amount that is taken out. That's significant, isn't that peanuts? Uh, it won't be. Oh, how high is it going? Um, there's one bill, for example, to to add a, a, another dollar uh, to for properties over two million. So a dollar per per hundred dollars. So. Uh, so on a, on two million dollars, that's that's twenty grand. Wow, this is directed at um, high end um, uh, property transactions. Maybe some of those uh, high end condos that are trading now these days. Right, but uh, two million dollars is it's 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 not that it's much high, anymore. but it's it's not that much anymore. <laughs> yeah, you know, Everett Dirksen, you know, a billion here, a billion there. After a while, it gets to be real money. Yeah. And after a while, we get to take a break. <laughs> That's Tom, Tom Yamachika of the Hawaii Tax Foundation. We're talking about what's going on midterm here in the legislature, good, bad, and otherwise. We'll be right back after this break. Oh, my head hurts. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Gabrielli. I'm the host for Young Talents Making Way here on FinTech Hawaii. We talk every Tuesday at 11 a.m. about things that matters to tech, matter to science, to the people of Hawaii with some extraordinary guests, the students of our schools who are participating in science fair. So Young Talents Making Way every Tuesday at 11 a.m. only on FinTech Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha, I'm Marcia Joyner and I'm Beatrice Gantemo and we have come in this series, Young and Old Alike, to take a look at our past, your past, and the fastest not seen history books. History books are his story and what we refer to as mirrors of the past, but we as colonized people, indigenous peoples and people of color, 
Look into the mirror and do not see ourselves there. On the ties that bind, we will examine those underlying causes. Please join us with the ties that bind on Wednesdays at noon, twice a month. We look for you there. Aloha. Aloha. Okay, we're back. We're live with the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, namely Tom Yamachika, who goes to the legislature representing our interests, tries to protect us. Because if we don't watch out on that, you know, tax is the most important thing. Tax affects us all. Tax affects us all in our, in our pocketbooks. Tax affects the economy. And most important of all, and I always harp on this, tax, whether you like it or not, whether you think of it or not as an incentive or disincentive, for conduct, public conduct, the way you lead, lead your life, the way you consume or not, the tax has a huge effect on, on public conduct, public behavior, the direction of our state. So tax is really central as far as I'm, the taxing power is really big, really big. So I'm glad you're there. Let's talk about, um, what was the next one? Uh, HARPTA. HARPTA. Okay, HARPTA, we were, since we were talking about buying and selling property, and, and we talked a little bit about the conveyance tax, uh, HARPTA is withholding income tax on uh, transactions of real property when they're, when they're sold by a non-resident. So uh, the current law is that we withhold 5%, which, is, you know, which makes sense because uh, somebody who holds property and, and then sells it is probably going to be liable for some capital gains tax. And the individual capital gains tax is 7.25%. Uh, but the person selling it will have some base in the property. You know, they, they, they would have bought That's it for something. That's a good guess, a reasonable guess. That's a reasonable guess. Um, they want to change it to 9%. Okay, so first on the, on the 5% thing, uh, suppose the guy takes the money and skips town. Suppose he's, uh, you know, from offshore somewhere, right? And he owns the property, sells the property. Escrow is withholding 5%. In fact, it's 7%. And he's going back to the, the depths of Sri Lanka. Um, how is the tax office going to get the other two percent from him? It doesn't. Does it doesn't. It? Yeah, it, yeah, it's very unlikely. Okay. That's, I mean, I just worry about the whole efficacy of that. There's, there's some. It's a reasonable estimate, on the based on the thought that well, at least we wouldn't be completely out of pocket when he leaves town. Um, right. But in this case, now they're raising it to nine. Why is it? Is for the concern I expressed, or something else? I think it's something else because. A lot of the properties that get sold turn out to be rentals. And so there's GET that's owed, there's TA, transient accommodations tax that's owed, um, and, they, and they scoop the uh, income tax withholding to pay, to pay those, which I think is, isn't entirely honest, but that's apparently what they want to do. So that's, that's that going on. Yeah. Will it uh, pass? Something will pass, it seems. Maybe another percentage, perhaps. Yes. Yeah. The percentage isn't, you know, nailed down yet. But, you know, for, for, first the Senate passed out seven and a quarter. Then they passed out nine. You know, same same bill, uh, almost the same wording, but the percentage was different. So it has to go to co the conference. Well, House hasn't hasn't acted on it. Oh. Yet. Okay. Yeah. So. So we, are you taking a position on that? Uh, we're just offering comments, like we always do. So you know, in the same vein, you know, you have the. Uh, the REIT bill, a yes. real estate investment trust bill, and Mike Fergus for years and years putting that, he's a real estate investor here, putting that bill in on the, on the, on the thought that we had all these REITs in town uh, who don't pay tax. Um, a, a local entity in the same business doing the same activity would be paying income tax to the state of Hawaii, but not the REITs, because they, under federal law, conform to a state of Hawaii law. Um, that money goes up and away, and the individual REIT owners, stockholders, if you will, um, the yeah, interest holders. They're supposed to pay tax on dividends, but they, but they don't because they're, they're in other states. They're in other states, and they pay on their income, presumably, in their own state and in the federal system, but they don't pay in Hawaii, and neither does the REIT pay. So the result is we're losing a lot of money to huge capital concentrations of shopping centers, big landowners, uh, got, you know, all the big, all the big trusts sold off to REITs, but now the REITs hold large tracts of land, including developed and undeveloped land, all over the place, okay, and they're not paying income tax to Hawaii. 
Um, now, Fergus was um, introducing this bill for years. I, I don't know if it got introduced this year. Uh, I think it did. Yeah, there was a variant that got introduced this year um, because the, uh, you know, the approach in, in Mike Fergus's bill was to tax the REITs. Um, and this year's bill was focused on the shareholders. Uh, and, and, and the theory behind it was, OK, well, if, if we give the REITs a break, we've got to make the shareholders pay tax. So it was, it was a withholding approach similar to what we do for S corporations. But uh, where, where, where that one is at now is that uh, Department of Tax is saying they can't enforce it. The AG is saying it's unconstitutional. Um, the AG of the state of Hawaii is saying it's unconstitutional? That's correct. Uh, which, but other which, states have provisions that tax REITs. Uh, no, they don't. Uh, only, really? only New Hampshire. New, oh, Hampshire. New Hampshire has it. Yeah, New Hampshire taxes the REIT directly. So they got by a constitutionality challenge there, I'm sure. Well, I mean, there is there is really no uh, challenge when you tax the REIT directly because it's the one doing business in your state. Right, simple. Yeah, that one's simple. Taxing the shareholders is, is a little a little tougher, but you know, if if we can tax S corporations, why well, can't we tax, tax REITs? REITs. Yeah. No reason why we can't. Anyway, well, so it doesn't look like it's going to pass. Well. It needs to be on life support at this moment. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. On the same on the same vein, we're talking about real property. Let's talk about Airbnb for a minute. You know, there's been so much in the paper about that. What's the status yeah. of? What does the bill say? What's the status? Okay. So, this is another one that's very interesting because the governor wanted to. Uh, the, the governor budgeted thirty million dollars or so coming out of the Airbnb bill. So, they they, they basically wanted. Um, the vacation rental platforms, you know, such as Airbnb, Flip, VRBO, and so forth, uh, to collect and, and pay tax on behalf of the individual entrepreneurs, you know, who, who own, own these different units. Um, but but they but they've loaded up the bill with a lot of uh, requirements, like they, they need to, uh, you know, get some clearances from the counties, and if they don't. Uh, all kinds of bad things happen, uh, including but not limited to the you know the county can uh, go after them to disgorge uh, the illegal profits and uh, so so basically make uh, the platform pay a you know large amount of money uh, when it's really not their fault. It's the it's the um, individual property owner who's uh, you know not compliant with the zoning law, and and you know how do you expect? Uh, you know, somebody like Airbnb to police that, right? Uh, but the but the net result is there are so many requirements for a voluntary compliance type bill. Airbnb, for one, has sent uh, the, the 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 money committees and the DO tax saying, okay, fine. If this is what you want, we aren't going to participate. We won't do it. So. Uh, yeah, so if you want your 33 million, you got to get it from somewhere else. That's what they said. This is what I call a mess. It is a mess. I mean, if you know, if you want somebody to do something voluntarily, there's got to be something in it for them, <laughs> right? I mean, come on, reality check. So it's stuck. Yeah, it's stuck. It's not going to happen. At least so far. Well, what position is the administration taking on this? They're supporting it. How about you? Me? I'm, 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 we just give comments. Okay. But, but, but the comments that, that, that we're uh, making are, you know, look, you know, if, you, if you want somebody to, to voluntarily sign this, sign on to this. Um, you, no you, can do. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if, if you load it up with liabilities and challenges and, and uh, you know, pitfalls and stuff like that, you know, who in the right mind, who in the right mind would sign the paper? So it fails which just sounds like he's going to get stuck and fail. Um, what's the result? Where are we then in terms of uh, Airbnb? Same, same as we are now. No uh, we have uh, individual entrepreneurs. We rely on them to you know, be honest and follow the law. And uh, you know, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Last one that I can think of, maybe we can think of others too, but is the GEMS bill. <clears throat> yes. So the GEMS bill, uh, it's, it was at the end of the Abercrombie administration, um, and it was intended to help finance 
Um, energy uh, energy uh, equipment on single family homes, I think that was a principal intention. And on profits, yeah. Okay, and on uh, um, people or companies that could not afford to get conventional financing. It was a bailout financing arrangement for people who couldn't otherwise qualify. And they raised $150 million with a bond uh, offering, uh, New York banks, um, and uh, established a kind of infrastructure about how to make these loans. And it's, I, I think it was scandalous that there were no loans made for at least a year. Not, not a penny was loaned to anybody. Yeah, I mean, they were following the same underwriting standards because they had to, they're fiduciaries. So um, if, they, if they didn't qualify for a loan and they came to GEMS, guess, guess what? You know, GEMS declined them. <laughs> no, 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 sure, because, because they were not qualified. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, so, um, so for, the, for the longest times, GEMS had uh, most of the $150 million still intact. So what did the legislature do? They, they loaned it out for them. So uh, in 2000, took, took it away. Yeah, in 2016, they passed a they passed a law that said, "Thou shalt loan 46.4 million dollars to the Department of Education to help cool the schools." And and by the way, uh, DOE doesn't have to pay interest on it, zero interest. Meanwhile, we the taxpayers have to pay interest because it's bonds. Right. We pay. But they don't pay. I don't get well, it. it. It's not. It's not taxpayers in general. It's the. It's the ratepayers because you and I the rate and, and anybody who has an electric bill, we, we pay. We, we pay. Yeah. Yes. Um, and uh, so what they want to do this year is the. They, they, they found that so edifying that uh, they want to do more of it. So they want to sequester another thirty million dollars <laughs> from the Gems Fund and and make it available to other state agencies uh, at a. Uh, a scandalously low, in, low interest rate of 3.50 percent. It's really funny, Tom. <laughs> they're taking the money away little by little. There's going to be nothing left. They're going to sweep it all out of there. The original intention of the statute was it will not be met at all. It hasn't been, in my opinion. Um, and, and you know, it's just another one of those things where, where they, they take the the, um, the legislature takes it from one and puts it in another, despite the fact that the original intention was. Something else. Yeah, and and uh, there was I also talk of using the gems money to find to fund some kind of rebate program. Um, if if they do that, would certainly be in breach of the bond covenants. I mean, because the you know, the, the money is there to lend out, not to give away. Yeah, yeah. I, and people forget. It's so interesting how the legislature forgets their original intention. I I oppose this. You know, I wrote a couple of articles in the uh, uh, it was the Star Advertiser about it. Thought it was a bad idea in the first place, and guess yeah. what, Tom? I was wrong. I mean, it was right. I was right, and they were wrong. <laughs> I, I've written on it as well, um, expressing probably similar sentiments. Yeah. Well, in a little next time you look, there won't be anything left in the fund. <laughs> what was left? To, we'll still have to pay the 150 million back. That's right. <laughs> okay. What else? You want to sort of characterize how things are doing right now? Uh, again, the you know the mood is. Geez, we got a budget hole and we need to, to fill it. So uh, people are being told there's no money. Um, I, I don't know whether you know, the agencies and the unions and so forth are believing that. Uh, because as, as you recall, uh, they were told in 2016, I think it was, that, uh, oh, we have a billion dollar budget surplus. And, and the next month, you know, they came to the union and said, oh, it, it's all gone now. Yeah. So uh, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not really sure if the administration has tremendous credibility with the unions right now. Meanwhile, we have all these um, liquidated and unliquidated liabilities to pay, which we are really not paying very well. Yeah, we, um, you know, we made these promises to our state workers and, and the retirees that A, you know, we'll give them these pensions and B, we'll take care of their health expenses for life. Um, those, are, those are significant financial obligations. They're growing. And they're growing. The, yeah. the, the, the liability, the, what do you call it, the, unfunded the delinquency liability. is growing. The unfunded liability is growing. Yeah. Well, Tom, the session's not over. That's sort of good news and bad news, I suppose. Um, and that means you'll have time to come back and talk to us again as it proceeds into the, you know, the ninth inning soon. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll, I'll be happy to do that. Please. Thank you, Tom. Thank Tom you, Tom Yamachika, Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Yay.